Welcome back. Well, the market is uh, all over the place, really. The Sensex and the Nifty are a tad bit higher, but it's the mid-cap end of trade that's really sulking now. The mid-cap index is down 200 points and a lot of pressure coming in on individual stocks. The advanced decline ratio has now moved well in favor of the declines. It's uh, really a slam dunk across many spaces. So not just result reactions like Nika, which is down 5%. Banks in the mid-cap end of trade are under a lot of pressure. Bank of India is down 4%. And all the Adani Group stocks, Adani Wilmar, Adani Enterprises, are taking a big knock this morning. So the market breadth has worsened, and I think that's the key highlight of morning trade. Uh, Castrol India posted a mixed set of Q4 numbers. They go by the calendar year, so that's Q4 CY22. The revenue growth was not too bad, but I think it's the margin pressure that has uh, spooked the street. The EBITDA is down 8%. Deepesh Bakshi, who's the CFO and whole time director of Castrol India, joins us now. Uh, Mr. Bakshi, good morning and thanks for joining in. Uh, you know, your margins have fallen to 23.2% versus 25% plus same time last year. But what you've managed to do is hold on to the lower end of your guided margin band. Uh, what is the outlook for uh, the you know this new calendar year? You think you could fall below 23%? Could it get worse before it gets better? Good morning and um, thanks for having me on your channel. I think, uh, you know, I would say our performance has been quite resilient um, given the challenges that we have faced in the marketplace, especially around the forex and the uh, inflationary pressures. And these all came from the volatile crude prices, rising cost of additives, base oil. I think what we've been able to do in this quarter, which also is the fourth quarter for us, is um, take the necessary interventions um, in the market. And as a result of which, you know, we've been able to make sure that our turnover and top line has grown. Uh, you're right. The margins have been at the lower band. And, uh, you know, what has happened also in this quarter is we are getting a forward outlook of uh, some softening of the input costs. And that's great because, you know, that will help us uh, move forward onto the next year. Uh, overall, uh, the, I would say that, you know, we're not moving from the frame that we have given on our uh, margins, which is in the range of, you know, 23% plus minus. All right. Uh, uh, hi, Mr. Bakshi. Thanks so much for joining in. But, you know, given that input costs are cooling off, would you be tempted to start guiding, to move closer to around the higher end of that range, 23 to 25%? Mm -hmm. And also, I see that, uh, you know, for the past quarter, there has been growth of around 8%. Split it up for us. How much of it was volume-led? Yeah, sure. So uh, I think uh, you're right. Input costs are softening. Uh, we do have programs in place to make the volume growth uh, happen. Uh, and there are a lot of programs in place, whether it is about cash to lot of services that we have launched in the marketplace or, you know, introduction of the uh, new products as well. Having said that, I think one input cost which we are worried about is the Forex because that's been relentless and that's not change at all. So right now, I would say that, you know, we're sticking to our um, range of 23%. Um, uh, of course, the endeavor is going to be to make the operating margin grow as well. In terms of the growth of 8%, uh, there are two factors, of course, the volume. The, the so, sorry, go on. go on. Please, please. You were, you were splitting the top line growth, 8%. What was yeah. it? Yeah, I was, yeah, on the 8% uh, top line growth, it's been uh, price that has led uh, to the main price. part of the growth, 8%. Mm. Volumes have been flattish. So volumes flattish in the past quarter, but for this year, for uh, 2023 on the whole, what kind of a volume growth could you be guiding for? A rough number. Yeah, so, you know, the category, which is the market, uh, where we operate in the lubricants market, that will grow in the range of 3.5 uh, to 5%, and uh, we will endeavor to grow above the market growth rate. Mm. Okay, in terms of demand, can you tell us? You said your, your endeavor is to grow above the market growth rate. But how has the demand been in general? Is there any kind of improvement? And what is the expectation in FY24 in the calendar year? So demand uh, is looking better than what it was in quarter four. In fact, you know, our, uh, our January results internally, which of course I can't disclose, that those have been very good. Uh, I see that the personal mobility segment, which is especially the cars and bikes area, mm -hmm. uh, that is going to continue to grow. And uh, we have also started the new uh, SMR, as we call it, service and maintenance uh, and repair workshop uh, initiative. So we do expect volumes coming from there as well. Okay, and in terms of the EV fluids, right? You have you're planning to launch your uh, EV fluid range as well in this year in the aftermarket space. Uh, so can you tell us what is the capex plans that you have for that segment? Uh, what is the kind of revenue opportunity that you see there? 
So yes, uh, Castrol Go is uh, Castrol On is the new product launch that we are doing in the uh, EV fluid. It will be transmission fluids, greases, uh, and coolants. Uh, it's it's going to be early days for me to give you a range of that. I think the, as far as the consumption of those goes, that is going to be uh, in the electric vehicles. Electric vehicles are growing. We already have a relationship with two OEMs, which is uh, MG Motors and Tata's. So, you know, we'll have to wait and watch how this market plays out in terms of the growth of the electric vehicles. Mm. Uh, Mr. Bakshi, you mentioned Forex being the big worry for you. Could you explain that in what way and uh, what can you do to mitigate that? Yeah, sure. So, you know, in terms of, uh, first of all, why Forex is a, is a input cost for us and, you know, why does it worry us? Forex, uh, we import about 60 to 70 percent of the uh, raw materials. And therefore, when you import that, you know, Forex is what comes into factor. Uh, we have an in-house um, uh, hedging uh, policy. So we do that and we try to mitigate that. Having said that, when we do our price increases in the market as well, we consider Forex also as part of the overall input cost recovery that we do. So there is a program in place. Uh, obviously, with the base oil coming down and softening of the other input costs, it's 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 about how do you manage the the increase in one input and, and reduction in the other input. The focus is going to be volume growth, market share growth for next year. Good hearing your thoughts, uh, Mr. Bakshi. Thanks so much for stopping by and filling us in with all those details. Wishing you a good 2023 ahead. As you said, demand is showing some traction on ground and you look to outbeat the industry growth. We look forward to having a chat with you rather soon. Well, yesterday was a bit of a 